moving to the next speaker, who is Dr. Abu Murad, who is our expert on acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for coming and, and supporting this uh, event. So my slides are quite uh, combined. So some of them are for the overview, others for the, uh, this uh, lecture. So my main focus is clinical. So um, when I started around 15 years ago, I was amazed by the discrepancy in outcome between children with acute lymphoblastic leukemia and adults with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So I will go over some of the... Okay. So this is the main slide that triggered my interest over the past 15 years is, as you can see, like this disease, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, is mainly a disease of the kids. And the median age at diagnosis is 15 years. So the majority of patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia are actually children. And more than 60% of patients with ALL are younger than 20 years of age. But it still happens in all age groups. So in, in children, around 90% of patients, there is no point of view, so go into remission with chemotherapy. And around 90 to 95% of these patients stay in remission and are cured on the long run while in adults, still majority of patients, around 90% of these patients go in remission to induction chemotherapy. But as you can see, and quite disappointing, is that the majority of these, these patients actually on the long run will, will relapse. So in, in the kids, this did not happen. The improvement in cure rate did not happen over one year or 10 years. It took around six to seven decades till we reached to this cure rate. And this is just a sample of the research that is happening there. This is from the St. Jude's Hospital uh, from the 60s till the early 2000s, where they have treated all kids on subsequent protocols with some changes, adding chemotherapy drugs, directing some chemotherapy during different phases of the treatment. And with this, as you can see, there has been significant improvement from a cure rate of around 15 to 20% at best in the early 60s to this cure rate of around 90% uh, recently. This did not happen in adults. So basically what we do in adults, we rely, we rely on, on, uh, on chemotherapy that we use in reduced doses as compared to kids. And we are not able to give chemotherapy in the same dose intensity as well as we are not able to adhere to protocols as they used in kids. So this is just a scheme of what a schema of what like the uh, treatment for ALL is usually in adults, induction, consolidation and maintenance. And these are the outcomes from large cooperative groups from all around the world. And as you can see, uh, it basically shows the same thing, that we are able to induce remission. Patients go into complete remission, but on the long run, most of these patients relapse, and the survival is disappointing at five years and seven years. And when I reviewed our outcomes over 20 years, this was in 2008, and the same, we have outcomes similar to the adult cooperative groups from around the world, where around 50% of patients, adult patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia are cured 
all age groups. The problem with with adult uh, ALL is is relapse, and when relapse happens, there isn't a good outcome from relapse. This slide is to show that when these patients relapse, most of the time, the cure rate, these are curves that we show, uh, as you can see, so most, almost less than 10% of these patients who relapse will be cured on the long run. This is quite disappointing. And the main goal in treating adult ALL is to prevent relapse. We need to give all what we have up front because when relapse happens, as you can see, there is little that can be done. So for this, we use certain tools and risk stratification factors that we can use to identify some of these patients that will do well on the long run and give them chemotherapy alone versus these patients that are destined to relapse and they needed to receive more than chemotherapy, such as high-dose chemotherapy and transplantation. And here we did some work in terms of using MRD, the one that uh, Dr. Sanford has uh, discussed briefly, in order to identify these patients that despite the fact that they went in remission, actually they still have minimal disease that is not detected <laughs> when we look under the microscope, but with specific tests like flow cytometry, identifying certain markers and genetic markers, we are able to see that these patients actually, they are in remission, but they still have measurable disease at this sensitive or through this, these sensitive tests. And these are lists, this is, prognostic factors that we use here at Vancouver in order to identify these patients that are at risk of disease relapse. We don't need to go through all this. So the other thing is everybody thought like why like the kids do well while adults don't do well. Can we apply children protocols exactly as they are to adults and what age group. So this is from Wendy Stock from Michigan. She is the first one to notice this difference. These actually around 200 patients, 300 patients between the age of 16 to 20. These are same age group depending on how these kids look and whether they presented to a general hospital or they look a little bit childish and presented to a children's hospital, same age group, 16 to 20, whether they were treated on adult protocol or on a pediatric protocol. So as you can see, she found this huge discrepancy in terms of remission in terms of survival on the long run, as well as relapse-free survival. So patients in this age group that were treated on the pediatric protocols, they have cure rate of around 60% versus 34% for same age group treated on adult protocols. Survival and event-free survival means like leukemia-free survival, same curves as you can see. So there is significant discrepancy in outcome, the same age group when they are treated on aggressive pediatric protocols versus adult protocols. And then other groups from around the world review their results and the same results as you can see from France, Holland, UK, and Italy. So at Dana-Farber, and in cooperation with the Boston group, we here in Vancouver took part in these trials where actually they applied their own pediatric protocols to adults with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. This was feasible up to the age of 50 years. So there were two prospective means trials that recruit patients and they are not review of data. So 
these two protocols happens, happen between the year of 2005 till 2013. And as you can see now, the outcome of adults with acute lymphoblastic leukemia up to the age of 50 years has improved up to around 70% when we treat using uh, pediatric protocols. And this is from the second trial here in Canada. It's called ALC4. Again, the same results. So some of our patients were treated on these trials and when these protocols ended, there is a certain number of patients that need to be included. Then we adopted these pediatric protocols as our standard of care at VGH where we treat patients up to the age of 40 years with these aggressive pediatric treatments. And then in this study, we compared the outcome of patients who were treated on the previous adult protocols as compared to the same age group treated on our standard of care pediatric protocols. So these are, this is the outcome of all patients the leukemia-free survival for all patients, the 47. But when we compare the ones treated on pediatric protocols, their cure rate is around 80% as compared to around 50%, similar to what we saw previously on the adult protocols. So this is now our standard of care for adults up to the age of 40 years. It's very challenging to give, to give these pediatric protocols to adults above the age of 40, 45. The older our patients, even starting from the age of 20, 25, the higher are the complications with these protocols. So there is a certain limit in terms of age that we can give these protocols to. So there are other treatments the target therapy. So on the surface of one of the cells, so the majority of patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia are of the B cell type, and around 15 to 20% are T cell type. So B cell, ALL cells, they have lots of markers on the surface that can be used and can be targeted. And this is just a sample showing these markers and the drugs that can be used to target these markers and get rid of these cells. They are divided into four groups, the naked antibodies, like the rituximab, the bite by specific T cell engager. These are cells that have receptors for both the T cell and the B cell, and they bring the T cell in contact with the B cell and this T cell can now attack the B cell and get rid of the cancer cell. So this is your own, the patient's own T cells identifying through this drug, the B cell and attacking it. There are the immuno immunoconjugates or to immunotoxins. There is a drug called inetuzumab and the CAR T cell that Dr. Hay talked about and in the past three years, these drugs have been used in large trials, but they have been used in the relapse refractory setting. So patients who had disease relapse after allotransplant or patients who did not respond to chemotherapy, first, second, or third line of chemotherapy, or these patients who had disease relapse and were not able to go into remission in order to go to transplant. And these drugs have shown amazing results in this setting. I will not go through this, but this is with the rituximab. Patients who received rituximab versus those who did not, they did much better. This is the blinatumumab. As you can see, it is a, it's a construct molecule that have receptors, so it can attach to both the T cell from one end and the B cell, the cancer B cell, or the normal B cell from the other end, bring the two cells in contact, and then the B, the T cell now can kill the B cell. 
And these are the results in the relapse refractory setting. This is the inotuzumab. The inotuzumab is a construct where you have an active chemotherapy drug attached to a receptor and attached to an antibody. And this antibody can attach to the receptor expressed on the surface of the B cell. And then the B, the B cell will take this drug with the receptor in and then this chemotherapy can go into the nucleus to destroy the DNA, which is the genetic material to cause cell proliferation and division, and it leads to cell death. And again, in the relapse refractory setting, it has shown amazing results for these patients who have no other options. So the main thing with these drugs is that they are showing very excellent results in the relapse refractory setting. The main goal is not to use them in this setting only, to move them on to a frontline therapy and to use them upfront in conjunction with chemotherapy for newly diagnosed patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia so we can get better results and prevent disease from coming back or relapse. The CAR T cell, Dr. Hay talked about that. So here in Vancouver, we had a trial that recently, actually around 10 days ago, came to a conclusion. It's an international phase three randomized trial where actually we used map in the upfront setting in conjunction with chemotherapy. And patients, depending on some markers, were randomized to receive map with chemotherapy or chemotherapy alone, and hopefully we'll get the results of this trial soon in the coming few months. There is another trial in the relapse refractory setting where we are using, hopefully this will open soon in 2020. The plan is to use, so in the relapse refractory setting, patients will be randomized, so they will go, some of them will go to map. Others will receive map, and third group of patients will receive CAR T cell. And this trial is mainly to show which one of these options is the best option in the relapse refractory setting. Thank you.